Hello students, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, so uh, yes, good evening. So today we are going to start a new chapter that is thermodynamics, okay? So you must have done this chapter in physics also, yes? Finish to in physics. Yes, respond guys. Have done have, have you done this chapter in physics? Not yet. Okay. Achha, it's going on. Okay. So there is a bit difference in uh, physics and chemistry of thermodynamics, right? Uh, convention wise, if you see, we have some difference. Like in physics, you have to study, uh, you know about Carnot cycle and all. Okay, yeah, so yeah, fine. So chemistry thermodynamics and phase thermodynamics, we have a bit of difference convention wise, like there in um, here in chemistry, we have work done on the system. If I tell you the example, work done on the system is positive. Work done 
binary system is negative it is opposite in physics okay so you have to be a bit careful when you are solving this question whether it is you know uh, assignment or test right so let's start with the chapter okay this chapter is a bit different uh, from all other chapters that we have done so far in chemistry okay different in that sense today in the session like three and a half hour session we have we are going to have mostly uh, you know uh, theory only because a lot of terms new terms we are going to understand first those terms will be using continuously frequently in this chapter later on right so first of all we need to understand various terms then uh, various kind of processes we need to understand we need to understand what are thermodynamic properties what are thermodynamic quantities right and then we will see the application of all those things later on right so today you are going to have the basic understanding of this the terms that we are going to use in this chapter those terms we are going to understand right based on these things like uh, on the basic understanding of it you will be having one assignment also today you will get right i will share one one dp dpp one i'll share based on all these things you can go through maybe all the questions you won't be able to solve but yes whatever you can you can try those that dpp ones okay so let's start with the chapter see one thing i am not telling you this all these things to you know to you know make you scared or something like that this chapter is so far the you know uh, the toughest chapter we have so far whatever chapters you have done in physical chemistry this is among all those among all them like this is the toughest chapter we have it's not like you won't understand the concept or the concepts are difficult to understand we have a lot of you know assumptions that we take like under this condition this will happen if the condition is this this will happen so those kind of things you need to understand okay if you keep those conditions in mind obviously you don't have to memorize it you have to think on the given condition in the question like this condition is given so this is the probable way or the probable answer of the question or the concept we should use this particular concept since the condition is this like this you need to think uh, if you, you know really want to understand this chapter okay so thermodynamics this chapter we are going to study in two parts okay um the first part is uh, we are going to understand obviously the thermodynamics we have we'll talk about enthalpy heat work you no know, um, entropy gives free energy everything we are going to understand the first part we are going to understand we call it as thermodynamics itself okay in some book they have given this two different chapters okay thermodynamics we will study about various processes thermodynamic quantities okay work done heat entropy gives free energy etc all these things we will study over here the second part of this chapter we have that we call it as thermochemistry okay thermochemistry thermochemistry is very important for neat point of view okay if you look at neat ka portion in neat they ask questions from thermochemistry very frequently okay it's not like they don't ask this but the kind of no the nature of this particular portion that we have if you are able to do the question you can do it in a minute otherwise you won't get it right this kind of questions there are so many things we need to understand here in thermodynamics maybe if you miss one or two things uh and if the question comes on that particular concept you won't be able to solve it right but thermochemistry we don't have much concept we have various definitions like enthalpy of formation enthalpy of neutralization enthalpy of you know combustion those kind of things we have and then based on that very basic numericals one law we have here which we call it as hess's law have you heard this name hess's law this we are going to understand over here okay based on this you will get numericals basic numericals you will get correct this is one thing very important for neat point of view if you look at the previous year question right they definitely ask question from this neat point of view and if you done this particular quest portions properly you will get the questions from this here you are not very sure with okay maybe few concepts you miss and you won't be able to solve the question over here that is the advantage of this particular portion we have okay so this is the two portion we are going to discuss in this chapter one by one 
first we'll start with thermodynamics and then we'll move on into thermochemistry this is a smaller one like we can finish this in one one or two hour in that like that okay so what is thermodynamics first of all and like i said what we are going to understand over here some thermodynamics as you are doing in uh, physics also this terms stands for two different terms over here like thermal and dynamics dynamics simple means motion okay dynamics means motion or flow right anything which is moving we we study no rotational uh, it's like kinematics that we have rotational mechanics okay where we discuss about the motion of the moving objects right circulatory motion many other things we have so dynamics is nothing but motion or flow thermo stands for thermal and thermal means heat right so it is a motion or flow of heat this chapter deals with this chapter deals with in short i'll write down here this chapter deals with motion or flow of heat okay it also deals with the phys feasibility of process feasibility of reaction you can say feasibility of reaction you can say or the feasibility of processes right reaction under what condition the reaction is possible simple example i'll give you okay a uh, carbon plus oxygen gives co2 correct you are sitting in the room there must be some wooden furniture right that is a bed of carbon and atmosphere we have oxygen why not the carbon the chair in, on which you are sitting in that carbon and oxygen combines and forms co2 that reaction is possible but it is not happening right why because the condition is not there so for every condition every reaction we have certain condition right that condition must be fulfilled for the reaction to correct so that we call it as yes whatever yes required temperature is not there fine whatever the condition but the condition must be satisfied right the condition must be fulfilled for any reaction to process right hence this particular thing we call it as the feasibility of reaction feasibility means what the reaction is possible or not under a given set of condition correct so all these things we are going to understand here in thermodynamics what is the condition for feasibility of reaction have you heard the term gibbs free energy delta g have you heard this term gives free energy delta g right delta g is the you must have done this in school right delta g is the gives free energy yeah so the necessary condition or the feasibility of reaction the condition is what delta g is less than zero this is the condition we have okay, i'm just giving you a brief overview of the entire chapter right so delta g is less than zero is the condition for the feasibility of reaction question is how would we how would we get this like why delta g is less than 0 for feasibility of reaction so all these things we will be understanding in this chapter deals with the motion or flow of heat how heat flows when you have an object at 100 degree celsius and another object at suppose 50 degree celsius 10 degree celsius whatever if you connect these two objects with a conducting wire then what happens heat flows from the temp higher temperature to lower temperature yes or no right so that so the driving force of the flow of heat is what the driving force is the difference in temperature heat always flows from high temperature to low temperature till the temperature becomes equal in the two objects correct this is what the heat flow 
is this the only way by which heat can flow or energy can flow this is not the only way right another way is what we can also do, do some work on the system right we can compress it we can expand it we can do many more things in order to exchange the heat from this system and other system or surrounding whatever you say correct so all these understanding all these kinds of understanding we are going to have in this chapter okay so like i said we are going to see discuss or you know uh, use a lot of different different terms here in this chapter i hope you all have the understanding of this entire chapter what we are going to deal with understand here in this chapter okay so next is we need to first understand all those terms which we will be using very frequently in this chapter or in the coming session of this chapter okay so we are going to understand first of all the terms involved in this so all of you write down the heading first the terms involved yeah so i guess all of you have joined of okay, yeah i think all of you have joined now fine terms involved okay so the first term you write down all of you is system what is a system what is a system system is anything anything around yourself okay it is anything yes under thermodynamic study or under investigation or uh, you know under uh, under operation we can say so system is what system is anything which is under investigation okay thermodynamic investigation is anything in short i'm write down all this definition okay it is anything which is which is under observations sorry under observation or investigation whatever we are looking at investigation okay it is a part of it is a part of universe okay i'll explain this what is system just let me just write down the definition first second one is surroundings surroundings okay what is a surrounding surrounding is is also like you know it is anything a part of universe okay right? universe excluding system yeah that's correct okay so we can also say all other matters all other matters or simply all matters also you can write all matters which interacts with interacts with system is called is called surroundings is called surroundings it is also a part of universe part of universe
ओके राइट दिस वेरी सिंपल राइट सपोज यू नो आई एम टेकिंग द क्लास करेक्ट and if i ask somebody okay you have done the homework or not then that particular guy becomes a system for me yes prakul any doubt you see now the prakul becomes system for me and all of your surroundings okay uh, let me just check oh yeah by mistake no problem so whatever is under consideration okay you are sitting in the room and you have pen in your hand right so if you are considering the pen for a moment so for that moment pen becomes a system for you and all other things in the room is surroundings okay it's very simple you can understand okay if i take one example here you see um this is the entire universe right this is the entire universe we have and in this universe we have one uh, i'll just change the color we have suppose one container present right in this universe we have one container and in this container there are some gaseous particles present so this entire thing is universe right the entire thing is universe this gaseous particle if i'm talking about this gaseous particles this becomes the system for me and in this universe you just remove the system whatever we are left with is surroundings surroundings okay yeah this orange wall that you see the wall of the container okay this wall is nothing but the boundary it's like the wall of your room is the boundary for you right so you are the system wall becomes the boundary and the entire house is the universe this is the surroundings and the entire thing is a universe right so surroundings and systems collectively gives the entire universe okay it contains everything universe contains everything surrounding systems boundaries everything okay now you see this boundary this boundary has different different types and on the basis of this boundary the types of boundary you can think of the exchange of energy or heat over there okay for example you see the types of boundary if i tell you boundary can be boundary can be fixed we can have fixed boundary like you see the room in which you are sitting in the wall is fixed so we have a fixed boundary okay we have fixed boundary we can have move, movable boundary so boundary can be movable also right example i'll give you apart from this we can have we can have real boundary right we can think of real boundary real boundary is fine we can also have imaginary boundary imaginary boundary and apart from this four we have two more types of boundary one is adiabatic adiabatic and the last one is and the last one is diathermic copy this down one second just give me a second
Ya, dan So fixed boundary you understood what is a fixed boundary? Movable boundary is the boundary which can move, right? Suppose we have a piston cylinder system and we we will take this example very uh, frequently, piston cylinder system, right? You must have seen a uh, the air pump, right, which we use to fill air into the, you know, the bicycle, right, the air pump, balloon also you can see, yeah, the balloon pump that we have, yeah, that's also fine. So we you see this uh, piston cylinder system is something like that only, okay, so we have a cylinder and this cylinder is fitted with a piston, right, this cylinder is fitted with a piston, I'm just trying to write, draw the rough diagram of it, this is the piston we have, for example. Now this piston can be fixed, can be, uh, you know, movable also. If you clamp this piston, piston over here, it is fixed. But if it is not clamped here, then you apply pressure, the piston can move up and down. So it is the movable boundary we have, okay? Real boundary is the boundary which you can see, which you can feel, correct? The wall of your room, the real boundary. Imaginary boundary is what? Suppose this is the atmosphere, right? We have this is the atmosphere, the entire atmosphere. In this atmosphere, we know there are several gases, right? Oxygen, methane, nitrogen, hydrogen, many things are there, many gases are there. But you cannot see those gases, right? But you know, okay, oxygen is present over here. So oxygen gas will have certain radius and according to the radius, it will occupy a certain volume, correct? That volume or the boundary you cannot see, but you can understand that, okay, it is, this is the volume of oxygen gas. So oxygen gas is present in this volume in the atmosphere. So this is the imaginary boundary you have, which you cannot see, which you cannot feel, you cannot touch, right? That is imaginary boundary. What is an adiabatic boundary? Any idea? Adiabatic boundary? destructive what is that yeah adiabatic boundary is the one which does not allow allow heat to pass through okay no exchange of heat heat we represent with delta with q so delta q if the boundary is adiabatic delta q is zero no exchange of heat right however we do not have perfectly or ideal adiabatic system we cannot have. But the best example we have is the example of thermoflask, right? That we use to keep, you know, uh, food or, you know, any uh, tea or anything keep, to keep warm, those things, right? Thermoflask that we have. Yeah, so these are the adiabatic boundaries, okay? Best possible examples. Diathermic is what? Diathermic is the one in which the flow of energy, through which the flow of energy is possible. Flow of heat, flow of energy is possible. So this is the types of boundary we have, okay.
Yeah, understood. So just you need to know the definition, nothing much. Okay, just you need to know the definition and, uh, and that is it. You won't get any question on this. Huh? You may have the application of this if, if in the question it is given that, uh, you know, suppose the boundary is adiabatic. So adiabatic boundary, you should know what happens in adiabatic boundaries. You should know there's no exchange of heat. Heat exchange is not possible. That kind of understanding you must have. Okay, nothing else. Okay, that's the one thing. Now, so we have understood system, we have understood surroundings, we have understood the different types of boundary we have, and we know system and surroundings, it collectively gives and surroundings, it collectively gives the universe. That's why we say both are the part of universe. Correct. If the boundary is fixed and you know the wall is adiabatic, fixed and adiabatic then if it is fixed, then obviously work done is not possible. Like pressure volume work done is not possible, right? So heat flow is not there. Heat flow is not there in that case. Fixed and adiabatic, no heat flow. Since it is adiabatic, so heat exchange is not possible. And since it is fixed also, so you cannot do work on it. There's no volume exchange, right? Volume change. So work is also not there. So hence the heat flow is not possible for fixed and adiabatic. So in fixed, we can do heat exchange. No, fixed and adiabatic heat exchange is not possible. Fixed and adiabatic heat exchange is not possible. And when I say heat exchange, heat exchange between system and surroundings. Obviously, within the molecule, within the gases molecule, heat exchange will be there, right? But not with system and surroundings. If the wall is adiabatic, right? But, you know, but it is not fixed, piston is um, movable, then work done is possible. You can do some work. Some expansion compression is possible and heat may get exchanged in the course of work done, right? The work that you are doing. So if it is fixed and adiabatic, no heat exchange. Understood? Yeah. Now you see different types of system. different types of system. The first one is open system. Open system, you one can understand the you know, open beaker you have, right? So if you have an open beaker, so mass as well as heat exchange possible, correct? Matter can also go out and come, right? So mass exchange possible, heat exchange obviously possible. So it is an open system, we have an open beaker, right? So there's a heat exchange and mass exchange, both possible here. Heat we represent with Q and mass is suppose M we have. So both are not constant in this case, right? So heat Q is not constant. It is getting change, getting exchange is not constant. Mass is also not constant. Okay, second type of system we have it is closed system. It is only closed. 
right? It is not mentioned that the, uh, you know, the wall is adiabatic. It is not mentioned, it's just a closed system, right? So in the closed system, what happens? You have a beaker, closed beaker like this. It is a closed system. So since across the wall or through the wall, heat exchange is possible, right? Through the wall, heat exchange is possible. Right? you must have seen when you boil water and you take that vessel in your hand, you feel warm, right? Because heat exchange through the wall of the vessel is there. So you can feel heat outside, correct? So that is what the heat exchange possible here. So in this case, what happens? Q is not constant. Heat exchange is there, is possible. And M is constant. Mass is constant over here. Whatever inside, it is there inside only. Mass is constant. Okay, no mass exchange. Yeah, that's why it is mass constant, right? No mass exchange. What is the third type of system we have? Third type is isolated system, right? What is an isolated system? Could you explain? Isolated system is the one which is which is not interacting with the, you know, the, the surroundings. It is just present in the surroundings, but not interacting, okay? So there's no exchange of heat. There's no exchange of mass. So Q and M both are constant here. Q is constant. Okay. So for isolated system, for a system to be isolated, system must be closed, isn't it? A closed system can be isolated system, right? A closed system or other way, if I say, an isolated system is a closed system, but a closed system may or may not be an isolated system, right? This closed system, it will be an isolated system as well. If you make this boundary adiabatic, right? If the boundary is adiabatic here, just a second. Um, if this boundary is adiabatic, if you do some arrangement here, so that heat exchange is not possible, then it will be an isolated system. Right? Difference in isolated and closed system, you must understand. Okay? If this is the condition we have, it is closed. If this is the condition we have, we preferably write isolated. If you write closed for this, it is not true. You cannot say, sir, this one is closed, so it is a closed system also. No. For this, we have a particular definition. It is an isolated system. Right? So we cannot say this is just closed. So isolated system, what happens in this, it does not interact with does not interact with with surroundings. Okay, all of you understood this? The definition of the three? Because this definition, the understanding of this definition is important, okay. On the basis of this, you may get some true-false statement, okay. You must have done this in 10th standard, true-false question, whether the statement is true or false. But here also, I'm going to give you six different questions. You just have to mark true or false, right? True-false statement based on the definition of the three types of system that we did just now, okay. So write down the heading. Can I go to the next slide, all of you? Yeah. So, uh, Okay, true false statement.
first question you write down a closed system always have constant volume i would request all of you write down the question first and then give your answer in one shot okay one true second false third true like that you can see second one neither heat nor matter is exchanged nor matter is exchanged then the system must be isolated then the system must be isolated okay isolated system system will be a closed system will be a closed system fourth one a closed system closed system must be and an isolated system in the last two we have fifth one an adiabatic container an adiabatic container fitted with fitted with movable adiabatic piston movable adiabatic piston will form an isolated system and the last one an adiabatic container an adiabatic container fitted with with rigid adiabatic rigid adiabatic piston will be an example of will be an example of closed system try this one more thing let me tell you i have done the same question in the rest the other two batches also okay and both the batches i got maximum four correct so four question is the maximum 
no question that I have got correct. More than four, none of them have uh, have given the answer, correct answer. So let's see what happens today here. All of you, give it a try quickly. Okay, done. Okay, let's discuss this. First of all, I tell you the answer. Okay. Yeah, the answer is false, false, true, false, false. And the last one is also false. How many correct? How many correct answer you got? Okay, three, then four, four. More than four, anyone? More than four, anyone? No. Achha, okay, Lavanya got five. Very good, Lavanya. Very good. Okay, Tidiksha got five. Very good, Tidiksha. So chalo, we got five uh, total correct answers. Okay, Lavanya and Titiksha. Very good. Let's see, we'll discuss this. All these questions are based upon the simple definition that we did just now. Okay. <clears throat> see, the first question is what? The first question is, uh, a closed system always have constant volume, not possible. If the boundary is not fixed, if the boundary is movable, then constant volume is not there. So definitely the first one is false because we can have, we can have movable boundary. Okay, piston cylinder system where the piston can move up and down, correct? Okay, first one is false. Neither heat nor matter is exchanged, then the system must be isolated, is it? neither heat nor matter is exchanged, then the system must, we cannot say, maybe may not be, okay? But we can say it is a, if suppose boundary and other thing is not fixed, then it is possible that we can do some work, work done possible on the system or by the system. And hence in that way, heat exchange is possible. Okay. Isolated system is not possible, right? Because work done is there. Through work done, heat exchange is possible. Isolated system will be a closed system. Yes, that's correct. For a system to be, uh, you know, uh, to be isolated, it must be closed first, right? So this one is true. A closed system must be an isolated system. Cannot say that. If the wall is not diathermic, is uh, you know is not adiabatic wall is not adiabatic boundary is not adiabatic then heat exchange is possible system is closed but heat exchange is possible but for isolated system we know there's no heat exchange there's no mass exchange right so with diathermic wall diathermic boundary if it is there then this statement is not correct okay last two an adiabatic container fitted with a movable adiabatic piston okay you see container as well as piston is adiabatic means there is no heat exchange right 
will form an isolated system right so you see piston is movable right it can move up and down so work done is possible work done is possible heat exchange possible hence it is not an isolated system right so statement is false isolated system is the one in which there is no heat exchange by any means okay so this is false an adiabatic container fitted with we can say this one is the closed system it is a closed system we have that we can say not an isolated system okay this one an adiabatic container fitted with rigid now now you see the piston is rigid now we cannot move it up and down so work done is not possible will be an example of closed system it is not an example of closed system but it is an example of isolated system isolated system is this fine yes isolated system uh, for the system to be isolated it must be closed but it is not an example of closed system it is an example of isolated system right there's a difference in closed and isolated system in closed system there heat exchange is possible isolated system heat exchange is not possible so here if you write down it is a closed system but heat exchange is not possible because the container and the piston both are adiabatic so so closed system is not this one okay see there are two things we are not defining closed system since it is a closed container understand it carefully all of you prakul and others right closed system is not the one which is closed right ek box ko close kar diya that system is not a closed system definition is what definition is for closed system that heat exchange is possible mass or matter exchange is not possible this is the definition we have right so you should not think uh, mainly you know what happens uh, students they start thinking about it okay it, the box is closed so it must be closed system but that is not the thing close is defined when heat exchange is there mass exchange is not there when heat mass both are not getting exchange then it is an isolated system right so this is an example of isolated system not a closed system did you get it all of you type in clr if you understood it quickly yes so don't get confused that the box is closed so it is a closed system it is not like that definition you just go by definitions yeah okay fine so this is the first thing that you should know uh, closed and isolated system correct 